So this kind of will go through each thing that I um, have for supplies. I have my Pyrex um, liquid measuring cup. This is what I measure the water in. I obviously have coffee filters. Um, all of my liquid rit dyes. I've got my glass bowl to put the water and rit dye in. I have my gloves. I have a pan to hold them in until I set them all out. And then I have newspaper underneath to protect the countertop. So I started with the yellow with six cups of hot water, which I did in my tea kettle because it needs to be the hottest it can be. And then I did one eighth of a cup of the um, golden yellow writ dye, the liquid, which I have found that the liquid writ dye does the best job ever. I've tried the powdered kind, I have tried acrylic paint, I have tried food coloring, I've tried Kool-Aid, gel food coloring, countless things, and the liquid writ dye seems to um, make the best color and it's usually colored all the way through all the coffee filters. And it's the most vibrant. So um, I usually wear my gloves because it will color your hands. I'm going to show you how I dye the coffee filters. So I'm putting on my gloves. I've already been dyeing some, so there's only um, probably a hundred more left of this stack. And you can see that like they kind of come separated already. But I divide each of these separations into four. So that makes the drying process a little bit quicker. I'm just gonna separate a stack, dip it into the water, I hold it in for a little bit. I pull it out, wring it out, I open it up, kind of pull it tight, and then I lay it in the stack to lay out to be dried. So I'm just going to keep dipping these. The water at first was a little bit hot. The gloves help obviously to protect that, but you can wait till the water cools down a little bit. It just mixes better when the water is really hot. The color in the bowl obviously looks orange. It is called golden yellow, but because I only put in an eighth of a cup, it's showing up this really nice bright yellow. So I have finished coloring all of the yellow ones. There are 400 here. 400 coffee filters will cover a small 8 inch paper lantern and a medium 10 inch, or it will cover a large 12 inch. So as you can see, my table, and this one as well, little card table, are covered with newspaper. And this time I put wax paper down because I've dyed um, darker colors in the past. I don't want the yellow picking up any of those colors from the newspaper. So literally I just take the stacks and I will lay them all out to dry. between the two tables I have all 400 in their stacks laying out to dry. Drying time depends on how thick the stacks are, um, if there's a fan going. I have these wine colored ones, well kind of raspberry, 
already done. Um, this was supposed to be cherry red. I have never been able to get red to turn out true red. Um, this is the process that happens after they're all dry. You're going to take each coffee filter and you're going to fold it in half. And then with your hot glue gun, I don't know if this is on yet, you're going to put a little dot right in the middle and then you're going to fold it in half again. So 400 coffee filters are going to end up like this. This is how they need to look before you attach them to the paper lantern. Alright everybody, so I have my lantern going. This is the small 8 inch. I'm literally sitting on my couch with my legs Indian style. This is the easiest way that I have found to attach the uh, coffee filters. I have 150 counted out right here and that will cover a small 8 inch uh, lantern. I've already started gluing on a few and so I'm just going to show you the process on which I um, glue on the filters. So I take one I put a dot of glue down in the corner, I flip it over, and I've been placing them, mm, I don't know, about a couple inches apart, I guess, inch and a half. Do another of glue. I started at the top right where the um, opening was and the, la the lantern kind of goes in a spiral anyway so I just kind of go along with the spiral and I as you can see I guess they're about two inches apart, an inch and a half, two inches apart. It doesn't matter which way the coffee filter opens. You're just going to glue them all on. And when I get about halfway through, I flip the lantern over and start gluing the other way. I am halfway done with the yellow. I kind of get this really pretty flowery look does not matter what color Chinese lantern you have underneath because the coffee filters will cover it completely. Now I'm going to start on the other side. You can kind of see right here it's smaller and then it starts to get bigger. So I'm going to start um, where it's big enough that a corner of the um, lantern fits or um, the coffee filter fits comfortably with glue on it and I'm going to start gluing and I just will start gluing all the way around until I meet with my other side. Coffee filters glued on as you can see so in the middle they kind of just end up meeting like this and making little Diamond shapes, you don't have to worry about that space because all of the coffee filters will be pushed kind of towards the middle once you open them and scrunch them. You can start on the top or the bottom. This is the bottom because it doesn't have the little hook up here to put string or anything. You literally are going to open each and every single coffee filter. Open it and take your hand over it and scrunch so it gives a little flowered look like that. This is why you got to have a lot of time and like shows you can catch up on because you're going to be sitting for a while. There's two. You can go around. You can start in one section and go down towards the middle. It's much easier with two hands when I'm trying to hold the camera. And there you go, there's three done. 
So you're going to do the whole paper lantern, all 150 coffee filters, and the end result will be beautiful. This palm is done. All of the coffee filters were opened and scrunched and it is good to go. Notice you cannot see any of the paper lantern underneath. It is fully and completely covered. And you can still open the top and bottom so you can attach a string to hang it with. I hope that the video uh, describes everything that you need to make the paper lantern. I have found a lot through trial and error and if you have any questions please please ask me. I hope I can answer them to the best of my knowledge or help you figure things out. Thank you for watching and good luck!